Hi there. Well, this is my kind of Miller time, Dr. Pepper. I can't do this on uh, Train Masters, but I should have stock in Dr. Pepper. Anybody that knows me knows I walk around with it. I'm so excited because I've got trains running. As a matter of fact, let's take a look. I'll turn my throttle on here and uh, we'll get it to go the right direction. And we'll bring it back. Goes through the turnout that direction. That's pretty nice. This turnout in particular, just like the other one, I had it mounted up incorrectly, so I had to come back and rewire it, but that's okay. Like I said, it's got a 50-50 shot at it. I just guessed wrong. My turnouts are real slow, but they, they work beautifully, and I like kind of that slow action. Whoops, come on, baby. Dead spot. Got a clean track. It's one thing you find out about. I get really excited about doing things. Forget a couple steps along the way, and cleaning track is one of them. If that throne was sure you're going through the other way. How about that? You can hear some clicky clacks. I got some knock, got to knock some rocks from that ballasting session that we did uh, three or four se sessions ago. So we'll turn that off. That's good. The track works. It's running. What I want to talk to you about, though, are some tips and tricks and some uh, gizmos that I use to kind of help me with the wiring because I don't like wiring. Okay, I'm a PE teacher. I've said that all along. I always fall back on it. Where, whenever anybody gets really technical. But on the other hand, you know, helps to be a little bit organized. Makes it a little bit more fun. So one thing I did was I went over, we got a brand new place here in town called the Container Store. Now the Container Store I went to about 15 years ago was down in Dallas and they've spread out now I think pretty much all over the country. And I got this little blue box. And this blue box is my lifesaver now because in it I have all the paperwork for programming the rabbit and the tortoise and how to wire the tortoise and I've got my mounting plate here for drilling I've got my big drill for drilling up for the throw rods anything that I need to work on the uh, turnouts or the tortoise right here in this little box so all I got to do is find this box and that should be pretty easy it's nice and bright and it's the only blue box I have on the layout so a good thing to do put all your tools for one project in one place in one box where you can find it the other thing that I have that I hadn't talked about before is this guy. And I think this guy is just the cat's pajamas. This comes from Walmart. It is a uh, uh, organizer, cabinet organizer for your wife's uh, shelves in the kitchen. And you say, wow, why are you so excited about that? Well, it's powder coated. And you know what that means? I can set it on my track and it doesn't short which means I can take my tool rack any place I want to around the railroad. I've got all kinds of things here that I can stick tools in all over the place. Doesn't make difference how many tools I've got. I've got a thing up here where I can put my uh, soldering iron in. It's absolutely fantastic. It's fantastic. I just screwed a uh, Radio Shack soldering iron station onto it. I can change these tools out. And I want to show you one thing that's the neatest thing of all, and that is these guys. These are, let's get one that's shows it a little bit better sorry about that we'll get one of these you can see it's a piece of PVC pipe and what I did was I went up and I got some sheet PVC from a plastic supply house and cut these discs out and the secret to this is to take a clamp and clamp across that overnight so that it's nice and tight that gives the PVC glue a chance to work and don't try anything else use PVC glue then I went to the same hardware store where I got the PVC and I got one of those connectors that goes on here and puts another pipe together and I sliced it into rings and glued that on the top. And what that allows me to do then, and I'm going to move you here, hope it's not too much, but you can see I've got them all over here and I've got all kinds of things that I can drop in and because they're nice and tight and glued, they stay. My calipers are here in a nice longer, uh, deeper one that I can use so I can put anything in there that I want um, and carry it all over the railroad, take, a, take with me the tools I need. And if I'm doing scenery, I simply change the tools out, put some spatulas or whatever else I might need in there. Now, the other thing that I have that's kind of specialized are these guys. And these guys are um, just regular test leads. This is one here in red that just has a couple of connectors on it, just a straight wire. I took that and then I took 
a suitcase connector here. I took one of these and cut it and put it on here so that what I have through the suitcase connector is one connection here, but I have the possibility of three connectors out here. So when I'm going to test something and hook up something, uh, like the two switch machines, and I need to go to one lead, I can do it. If I had three connections I had to make, I have the possibility here because I have four leads that I can go to off of this. So these things are really kind of fantastic. I've got them in both black and white, a couple different colors, uh, so that I can use them. They're really helpful for hooking up things temporarily um, just to see if they're going to work. And the other thing I want to go into is my wire rack. Take a few minutes, go to the shop, a little woodworking, get away, you can bang something, beat something. If you're having frustrations with the railroad, this is a good way to do it. I have 16 gauge wire up here on the handle. That's my leads for my power buses. My 20 to 22 gauge wire is all down here and I have it up both sides all the way around. I have a couple of um, connectors here or hooks that I can hook little um, buckets on and I could put my suitcase connectors or crimp connectors on there. And I have a wiring chart here that tells me for which colors and what voltages. So this is red and blacks, 24 volts, green, and white 18 volts, yellow and brown 12 volts, and I have those all running under the layout that you can see here. Um, I have a big bus wire that has a whole bunch of wires in it. One other thing that I didn't show you or haven't shown yet is this little guy. Now he looks like a regular staple gun, but I'm going to give you a, a close-up again here. Look at this little guy right here. That's a crown staple and it's made for wiring. Let me grab this guy right here. And you can see I can run all kinds of wires underneath there. And you can see in this picture underneath the layout, I've used several of them to hold nice square corners. It's worth a few dollars to go out and buy this little guy because he really makes it much easier for you to be very neat underneath the, the railroad. And it also allows you to keep the wires up so they're not dangling. Uh, it's just an amazing thing to have on your railroad, um, making it awfully easy for you to do all kinds of wiring, much, much neater way to go about it. Excuse me, which one brings me to the last thing I want to talk about. I'm one of the most unneat guys probably when it comes to working. I've got stuff scattered all over here as you can tell. But when I go underneath the railroad, things get totally different. It's another world and it looks like somebody else built this railroad. I like everything to go square, neat, clean, because I started off, I think like a lot of people do, with the spaghetti bowl of wiring, you know, one color, I got it cheap and I wired everything up with it and I couldn't trace it down, I couldn't find my problems and it made electricity, which is already for me, not the most fun pro project, it made it far less and it made it frustrating. And there's no sense in adding to your frustration level. So take a few minutes, like I've done here on this connector, and I've got my power wires coming in on the bottom, I've got my accessory wires coming out the top, and all the corners are nice and square and neat. The other tip I have for you is twist your wires together. You'll notice that I have several of those where two wires are twisted together. I just simply clamped one end, put the other end in my drill, spun it, and they're twisted together immediately, and now that makes it three times as easy for me to trace it down because I'm not tracing individual colors, I'm tracing pairs. And it's very easy for me to follow along and see where those wires go. So just a few tips, I hope they help you in your wiring efforts on your railroad. What I got to uh, say is that the next episode, uh, I'm gonna change horses a little bit and I'm gonna go back to doing scenery, which I may be kind of known for a little bit better than electricity, I hope. I've got a scene in Kansas City, a street scene that I previewed in the Train Master series and I want to take a, a little time on YouTube to show you how I would go about finishing that street scene. It's a stair-stepped, it's a place where you've got to bury some uh, foundations and stuff. So it, it'll be some interesting scenery work to do, not the average just throw some green around. So I hope you get a chance to come back and visit with me next time. Hopefully maybe by next week, I'll have that scene up and ready to go. And in the meantime, as I always say, happy model railroading.